Hi there. Come on in. I'm Fred Trost, and this week on Michigan Outdoors, we're going to sort of drop back in time, but we're going to go fishing in an area that you're going to find most interesting up here in the Sylvania Tract up in the Upper Peninsula. It's a wilderness area in the Hiawatha National Forest. Excellent fishing. It's catch and release. You have to let most of the fish go you catch, but that's okay because it's a lot of fun. You get to catch some big two, three, four-pound smallmouth. You never get a chance to catch it any other time of year. Boy, this is a nice looking little bay here. This is some of these snags and stumps in here. Look terrific. Set that paddle down quietly. What I'm gonna be using here, using a little jig. This Luke said that that should uh, do a number on him. So I'm gonna give this a try. The way you work a little jig like this is you cast it up in there and uh, let it settle on the bottom. Give, oh, oh, I got one on. I got one on. Oh, boy. Hey, what luck. Seems like a nice one. Gotta tighten this drag down a little bit. That's, uh oh. There he comes. He didn't want to come in too much. There we go. It's no bad one at all. Holy cow. Let me get... Come here, you little monkey. Come here. Oh, he's looked like he's hooked pretty well in the lip. There we go. There we go. Sort of paralyzes him when you pick him up like that by the lip. Get this hook out. Ah, doggone it, unfortunately. That's a nice little bass. Unfortunately, here in Sylvania Trek, I have to throw them back. Ooh. I personally haven't caught enough fish in my lifetime where I enjoy throwing them back yet. But Yeah, that's about 15 and a half inches right there. Not bad at all. Well, here he goes. Good luck, fella. And that's the way it's done. Let's see if we can catch a bigger one. I used that little pinky jig to catch all of my smallmouth bass on the day and a half I was fishing for smallmouth. Luke Dallas here took most of his smallmouth on a deep running lure, one that uh, worked down under the water five, maybe eight, nine feet. There again, he has to toss his back just like I did, a real heartbreaker to throw bass back like that. Now Luke wipes his hands off and shows you the lure that he was using. Totally different than the jig I used. The jig that I used, I bounced across the bottom Luke's lure works more like a little minnow scurrying or maybe imitating a craw crayfish. And in the middle of the afternoon, well, around noontime as a matter of fact, we got a rainstorm. Well, there's not much we could do, but just wait it out. We did catch a few fish in the rain, but we also stopped and fixed lunch, had some sloppy joes, and boy, were they good. With all that rain, out there, blasted at us about noontime through lunch. How, how did that affect your day? Didn't affect me too much. Uh, I still had a great time. Just a super day of fishing. What about the lunch? Luke, you were hungry, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I got hungry there for a while. We got in there about 2 o'clock, and uh, the soup, the hot soup, was really good after the rain started. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, you got to be prepared up here for, for bum weather, right? Didn't you get into some heavy weather the last time you were here? All four days it rained. And I walked out and uh, never thought I'd dry out. But the question is, was it worth it? I'll be back just as soon as possible. Why? What was so great about it? Well, the, the smallmouth bass are just unbelievable fighters. They just tug and jump and put up everything you'd want. Have you ever had bass fishing like this before any place? Not up here. I've had fishing almost as good in Canada t uh, at times. I caught... Uh, 
fish, I caught about 10 of them that range from 15 inches to 17 and a half, two of them 17 and a half, just spectacular. Knocked me out on that ultralight rod. I fished the whole time with that little pinky jig. I tried a few of the other uh, crankbaits and things, but zilch, it didn't work. And uh, the day before, I got a couple on the pinky jig, and it was spectacular. That ultralight was bent on one fish I had on for about five minutes. What was, what was your big battle story? Well, uh, the first thing is I switched off of the crankbaits and went with MEPS most of the day. And uh, we uh, uh, caught a small bass, or uh, my good friend over here caught a small bass, and we looked over and saw a bass down there that had to go six pounds. It looked wow. as big as a grouper. This portaging can get pretty heavy. I saw you, Laurie, coming back on a portage, and you looked like you were pooped. I was. Uh, that portage coming back was a little bit slippery, but it was probably one of the easiest we've done up here. It was more level than the one we were on yesterday. Is, is anybody tired? Well, I think we all are. <laughs> it was a long, hard day, but well worth it. The portages were a little rough after especially after all oh, the second or third day into the trip because when you go to a different lake you have to cross over those portages but boy the rewards were well worth it for us at Deer Island Lake catching smallmouth bass like this a real treat you don't very often catch fish that size now there are uh, master angler rewards of course for smallmouth bass in Michigan you have to have a five pound smallmouth but actually there are only about a handful that size entered each year Smallmouth bass differs from a largemouth bass, and it does have a smaller mouth. And here you notice on this one, the holes around the rim of the mouth, those are indicators of where this fish has been caught before on an artificial lure. Now, if natural baits were allowed, the fish would tend to swallow the bait, putting it down in its stomach, and most fish would probably be killed rather than being able to be released as with artificial lures. So this fish could go back, grow bigger, and be caught again. What about the fish that you caught that have been caught? Well, I did catch some fish today, a number of them that uh, had obviously been caught before. But uh, put back rule, if that ensures the fishing is going to stay as good as it was today, I'm all for it. What about you, Terry? What do uh, you think about that throwback rule? Well, it's a fish for fun, and that's exactly what it is. I hope they never change it, and I hope it stays just as good as it is today. It's a super rule. How good was it today? The best I've ever had in Sylvania, and I've been up here for 10 years now. That's good. Well, you know the fishing's good when you can allow the cameraman some time to fish himself. And he can catch fish, too. There's Bob Bishop tossing out a crankbait, and he connects with a hefty little smallmouth. So that's the fishing in Sylvania Track. I heartily recommend it. It's worth the trip up there. It's worth it even if you don't like to fish, if you just like to camp and take pictures. What a time you can have on a Michigan weekend in the Sylvania Track. Put it on your calendar for this summer. Terry, uh, it was your idea to go to Fisher Lake today. Um, you told us we were going to catch loads and loads of big bass. Did you say big bass? Lots of bass. Lots of bass. Lots of bass. Yeah, I caught lots of bass. How about the rest of you? Did you look? Oh, yeah. I caught more bass today than I ever caught in my entire life. Is that right? Yep. How many do you suppose you caught? Well, I'd say we caught about 15 or 20 of them there in that one short spot just before lunch. And when they started hitting those topwater baits, that was exciting. I enjoyed that. What did you use? I used that little floating Rapala, uh, a number nine floater, perch color. Mm -hmm. Just a beautiful sensation to watch them come up and smack that. You're from, originally from Indiana? Right, northern Indiana. And you moved here, what, a year ago? Last July. Have you ever been up to Sylvania or up northern Michigan this like this? This is my first trip into the UP, and I'll be back again. This is really exciting. Terry, what did you catch? A lot of small, largemouth bass today. How big? I'd say the biggest that I caught was about 12 inches. I, the, I, measured, I measured one just before we quit. I hadn't measured any all day. Mine was 11 and a half, biggest one. Uh, that got to look pretty big towards the end of the day. 
You can say that again. <laughs> Don't ask me about the big fish. All I caught today were some moderate and some small ones. Well, geez, we had a great time, though. Uh, super time. Well, who, who caught the big fish? Well, who else but uh, Scott? Scott, you caught the biggest one? Yeah. How big was it? About 14 inches. How are we going to prove that he got it, though? We've got a picture, and we took a snap. Oh, you did? Holding it. Yeah. Super. And uh, we'll have that in a little while. Okay, that would be great. How did that fight? Did that jump? Well, not much. Huh. No, it stayed underwater quite a bit. The, the big one just stayed down and rolled. Well, what about you, Lloyd? What did you <clears throat> haul in? We saw you hauling in a couple. Well, in quite a few uh, 10, 11 inch, you know, bass. Uh, There's a lot more bass than I've ever caught in one spot before. What were you using? We were using uh, little golden number two MEPS spinners, and uh, they seemed to work quite effectively. What did you find was the most successful? I used a, a, a black popper about the size of your thumbnail, and uh, I caught just all that I could uh, bring in before I got too tired. And uh, it was really exciting. Every largemouth that we got jumped. And uh, the only thing that I wish they were just a little bigger. Mm -hmm. Did you notice, it, it seemed to me that the bigger ones, you know, 10, 12 inches, when you felt you really had a big one on, it didn't seem to come out of the water as much as the smaller ones did. Did you notice that? Today, yeah, that's true. Uh, the small ones, every one of them came up, though. Oh, I know. We'd uh, we wait for the wait for a bigger one to get the camera rolling. Doggone thing. <laughs> Wouldn't take out of the water like the little ones. You know what we ought to do is stop and take a look at Mama Merganser. Look at Merganser. Yeah. that. Right out there. Jesus, they're look all, at that. With all, they're all riding on her. her. Right on her back, yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? One, two, three, four, five, six small hooded Mergansers on Mama's back. Unbelievable. Oh. We saw today this was incredible you know those two loons that were out there yeah we were standing and fishing on a log that was uh, and the loons came in very close we're hanging around bob looked over and said fred that's it look at look at over here there's a loon nest right next to the water it just had one big loon egg in it so they you know she must have been waiting to lay some more looked like a big four inch piece of sandstone one of the ugliest eggs i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> We were over in that corner, and uh, the, the loon came right up to us, and we couldn't figure out why it let us get so close, and what she was doing was protecting her nest. Just, uh, all of us used different lures, and all of us caught a lot of fish. The big question is, though, you know, we did a lot of portaging to get there. We went through a lot of mosquitoes, and, uh, oh, my shoulders still ache from all that paddling and carrying all that gear. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Absolutely. Why? It was just a beautiful experience. It was just something I've never experienced before. You know, it's just super back in there, uh, all quiet and uh, watching those fish being caught by everyone. I really enjoyed Terry using that uh, fly rod. Mm -hmm. It was really fun to watch that with that popper. Oh, he, his technique is very good. Yeah, very good. I mean, the way he hits the water on both the forecast and the back cast. <laughs> that, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, he did his... I, uh, Bob filmed me a couple times, and he asked me to cast, and whoosh, whoosh, slapped it all over and caught my jacket. The whole works. But uh, what about you guys? You you thought it was worth it to go back there to catch all those little ones? I think it was definitely worth it. Just like you said, the experience of just going back there and, and the solitude and the peace, and uh, it's, it's just a marvelous place. Boy, this is a nice-looking little bay here. This is... Some of these snags and stumps in here look terrific. Set that paddle down quietly. What I'm going to be using here, using a little jig. This Luke said that that should uh, do a number on him. So I'm going to give this a try. The way you work a little jig like this is you cast it up in there and uh, let it settle on the bottom. Give. Oh, oh, I got one on. I got one on. Boy, hey, what luck. Seems like a nice one. Gotta tighten this drag down a little bit. That's, uh-oh. There he comes. He doesn't want to come in too much. There we go. It's not a little bad one at all. Holy cow. Come here. 
Little monkey. Come here. Oh, he's looked like he's hooked pretty well in the lip. There we go. There we go. Sort of paralyzes him when you pick him up like that by the lip. Get this hook out. Ah, doggone it, unfortunately. That's a nice little bass. Unfortunately, here in Sylvania Trek, they have to throw him back. Ooh. I personally haven't caught enough fish in my lifetime where I enjoy throwing him back yet. But yeah, that's about 15 and a half inches right there. Not bad at all. Well, here he goes. Good luck, fella. And that's the way it's done. Let's see if we can catch a bigger one.